Now page four, why America must reject the mask mandate. Rasmussen did a poll about the reopening of the United States following this political response to the Wuhan coronavirus. And the results should not be surprising. Rasmussen asked the question, a proposal has been made that will allow all who are not sick or vulnerable to return to work in the area where you live. Would you favor or oppose this proposal? 38% somewhat or strongly oppose. These would be the lemmings, right? These would be the uneducated. These would be the suckers who actually believe the mainstream media's propaganda machine on behalf of the blue state and blue city elected officials who are hijacking our economy, our mobility, our freedom, our liberty, and our baseball. Morons, all of them. I'm sorry. Is that too strong? Well, they are. Even if they are elderly and or sickly and or scared, to these people I would say, do your homework. Learn the Constitution. I'm sorry, but I have lost my patience with Americans who do not question authority and who simply repeat the refrains, refrains of Marxist socials like, maintain social distancing. We're all in this together. Stay home and stay safe. And of course, wear a mask. However, those respondents to the question who strongly favor or somewhat favor healthy people going back to work in this country Thank God is the majority. Not by much, but 51% of those polled say, get back to work, America. To those people, I say thank you. Thank you for paying attention to the mortality rate from the Wuhan coronavirus plummeting to a number below the seasonal flu. Thank you for using some common sense. Thank you for smelling a political rat. And speaking of rodents, I refuse to be treated like an animal, a subhuman being without individual rights by being forced to wear a mask in public. I'm sorry. If I'm not here one day on TV, then you can assume I'm in jail for refusing to comply. And I will tell you why I am so dead against it. Number one, I do question authority and the lack of wisdom of ordering people to cover their faces when they're at the beach or at the park or walking around or driving alone in their cars, let alone simply going down the street. Number two, I can't see your facial expressions. I'm sorry. I need to see if you're smiling or not when you tell me, nice haircut. I want to know, is that sarcastic or genuine? It's called being a human being. Number three, what about the 10 million deaf or near deaf people in this republic whose very survival is dependent on reading lips. What about them, Eric Garcetti, Bill de Blasio, Lori Lightfoot, hmm? How are they supposed to understand what people are saying with coverings over people's mouths? Sounds like discrimination to me. Number four, even for the non-hard of hearing, speaking with a mask on makes communicating difficult. It muffles speech, right? I'm sorry, again, but if my speech is muffled, then my speech is being limited. And if my speech is being limited by government, then that means that my First Amendment rights are under assault. And finally, number five, the very symbolism of being forced to wear a mask is everything that we are supposed to stand against as Americans. Our Constitution restricts our government from infringing upon our inalienable rights. If a government-mandated mask is not an infringement on these rights, then I do not know what is. To me, the very notion of being forced to cover my face is tantamount to an attack on my constitutional right to liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and freedom of movement. They're all under assault by a mask mandate, which is why America must reject it. Likewise, Americans must reject politicians like Andrew Cuomo, who manipulate our federalist system when they want, how they want, in order to advance their radical ideology. We're supposed to bail them out. It's we and it's them. That's not right. Who is Stop we? Stop it. Who's we and who's them? 
Let me educate you, Governor, who's we and who's them. We is me and the rest of America. We are the people who pay taxes, who pay federal taxes to the federal government and have Nancy Pelosi and company spend it on abortion. We are those people. Them is you. You would be blue state governors. You and your ilk, the dude in California, and the guy in Colorado, and the guy in Illinois, and the maniac in Virginia, and all the other blue state. That would be them. That would be you. And so you come up to President Trump and you say, we need ventilators. We need ventilators. We don't have enough hospital beds. And so the President of the United States hunts all over the world to get ventilators and gives you more ventilators than you need. You have excess ventilators now. The President of the United States answers the call. You don't have enough hospital beds. He sails a ship to your port to be used, it's a hospital ship, to be used for the overflow, for the surge that never happened. And he did the same thing in Los Angeles. Sent the ship there, the hospital ship, and it was virtually not being used. They sent him back home. So you're out there telling, ordering, demanding from the federal government all these goods and services that you should have supplied your state. You are responsible for the ventilators, Governor, and so is the governor in California, and so is the governor in Illinois. All the states are in charge of that stuff. They're in charge of setting how many doctors will be in place in each state, how many future doctors will be in each state, how many beds in each hospital are available. You're supposed to be in charge of that, not Donald Trump. You are the them now with your hand out to the federal government saying, hey, I have this giant hole in my deficit, in my, in my budget, a huge deficit, billions and billions of dollars, and I want me to pay it. That's what this is all about. This is about irresponsible and radical leadership at the gubernatorial level in New York and in California and elsewhere that have giant holes in their budget now want the federal government, i.e. we the people, to clean up their mess. It is the antithesis of the federalist system set up by the framers of our Constitution. The framers of the Constitution would be saying the same thing that I'm about to say to you, Governor, and that's go pound salt. The federalist system is set up that you are responsible for this kind of stuff. You are responsible for your budget, not the American taxpayer through the federal government. Absolutely not. And so maybe we're witnessing the destruction of our federal system. Who knows? Cuomo and Newsom and Pritzker and the rest of the gang, right down to the mayors of these large blue cities, they all have their hands out right now demanding the federal government effectively federalize their budget. Maybe that's what we're witnessing here, the birth of what the framers of the Constitution shed blood to avoid, an all-powerful, all-knowing, central, authoritarian government. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.